So I'm at NCMT, I'm going to be looking at a Makino machine now, there's a five axis machining centre. We did get the chance to see this at Mac and in fact I've seen it at other trade shows, but every opportunity I get I want to look at this machine and take it across or show our viewers it. Tell us what's good about this D200, which, uh, which we'll, we will be able to see on camera, but it, <laughs> it's fascinating. Um, the D200Z, uh, I mean it's based around sort of doing die mould work, high precision, high accuracy sort of uh, stuff really for your workshop. Um, it's got a small footprint, so you know a lot of people now are struggling with uh, you know the size of their workshops, which is one thing Makino look at. Obviously, being Japanese, they look at machine efficiency, um, you know, and, and how they can make a machine smaller but still keep you know their principles how they are, which is quality in the machine build uh, and accuracy. Is everything? I mean, when we look in here, this is what they call like a closed bridge, isn't it? Yeah. So you've got the, 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 it's the best configuration we're told for actually machining to really tight tolerances. Um, and just to explain, and you may be better at it than me, but really the centre point of the part is always remaining in a consistent position, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah, it's all about the, the table design on the Makino. It's all about um, keeping the part and the weight of the part around the centre line, a centre point. So as you'll see on this machine, the movements are very smooth. The table's very agile. Uh, the direct drive motors on that um, all add up to a really stable sort of platform to machine on. All right, let's have a look around the side because um, this is where we'll, we'll, we'll really see how small this machine is and the footprint of the machine. If you come here, I mean, it must be, I don't know, less, a, a couple of metres, I would say. And yeah. If you step this way, yeah, Charlie, yeah. It, it, it is, it's tiny, isn't it? I yes, mean, it is, yeah. I think it's 2.8 metres um, right. from front to back um, and it's only 1.8 wide. Okay, um, and then this is where your swarf is evacuating out the back. So there's even attention to detail there on the size of the of, of the conveyor. Yes, yeah. I say again, coming down to the space saving side of it, they've uh, you know bought everything inside the machine um, to really help with you know well to help with the footprint. Um, okay, let's step back this way. Couple more points I want to talk about, and we should mention that this machine is available uh, from stock. Who are, the, who are the companies, in fact, you stand this side, Charlie, yeah. who are the companies that would buy a machine of this nature? Because it isn't for everyone, is it? Um, no, it's not for everyone. Um, you know, as I said earlier, die mould, high precision work. Um, you know, it's also really a great machine to complement if you're an EDM, you're doing spark erosion, uh, graphite machining. We're looking at those sort of people, really, um, who need the accuracy. And, and that's what we're really talking about here, then. There's two things, I think, is the accuracy that this machine can achieve, but also the surface finish. So what, what are the problems that people might encounter that would push them towards this, this sort of solution? Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, you're, you know, you've got your tool, your, your CAD sort of um, programming system. Now, you know, the, the Makino's got a, a GI smoothing function within the machine, which actually smooths out the tool path you've created. Uh, and also, with this sort of table design, the low vibration that the machine produces overall allows the machine to produce sort of mirror finishes. So you're moving and you're, you're, you're removing sort of manual work to the, the machine or the, the component after it's come off the machine. So machining to extremely tight tolerances, yeah. but also uh, removing the possibility of having to do additional operations and mirror finishes. Yes, yeah. And it does this because of the build quality. And there's also a couple of other points. The cooling, I was told by your colleague, there's no heat in this machine anywhere. That the ball no. screws, the spindle, the motors, the, the casings, the castings, all of it is, is cooled, isn't it? So that part is always at a consistent temperature and so is the machine. Yeah, exactly. It's a very stable machine. Um, you've got you know, jacket cooling, uh, core cooling around the uh, spindle. So for those long running cycles, high R, uh, RPM, you know, the machine's got 30,000 RPM uh, you know, to use. Um, so all of that keeps the spindle growth to a minimum. Um, and also with the uh, ball screws, and the motors, um, they're all cooled as well. So if you're running long cycles, lots of speed, uh, lots of acceleration, deceleration on your component, um, the machine is going to keep stable for long periods of time uh, and ultimately produce a brilliant, a brilliant bit, a brilliant part. Which is what you might need if you're doing long runs on multiples and things like that, yeah, which is exactly. where it fits. Um, D200, available here from stock at NCMT, Japanese built machine. Uh, their thoughts and their processes always include making these machines economical. So good on the power consumption as well, but I suppose more importantly, high precision, high speed machining from NCMT. And it's in stock. Thanks, Charlie.